Hello everyone, and welcome to the Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today, we will talk about the size factor, hidden premium in small capitalization stocks. Hello everyone, my name is Rodna Vodko, I'm CEO of Quantpedia. Today I would like to discuss uh, the size premium. What's the size premium? Size premium is the historical tendency for the stocks of firms with a small market capitalization to outperform the stocks of firms with a large market capitalization. It is also one of the factors in the Fama French uh, three factor model. This premium is around us for a long time, uh, at least from 19th, so over 30 years. So, what we can say about that? At first, yeah, it sounds very logical that the small companies should outperform the large one because the smaller they are usually younger, they are highly innovative, they have more opportunities to grow compared to the large companies that are, of course, uh, very large and they already compose a significant part of the market. So, yeah, it sounds logical that uh, small companies should outperform the larger one, but there are some ifs. <laughs> as, uh, as it is usually the case in life. Of course, the larger companies have some very strong advantages compared to the smaller companies. For example, the financing, uh, when you are the larger company, you have more money, uh, you can buy the small company, <laughs> for example. So it is not so black and white. There are a lot of papers that are related to size factor. Also, some of the strategies that are related are on Quantpedia. You can find them via the keyboard uh, small cap. First, I would like to show you how the size premium actually performs. We have an article or a strategy in size factor small capital stock premium in Quantpedia that's uh, freely available. You can uh, see it by yourself. The trading strategy is that we have invested in universe that contains all the NISA and MIX contact stocks. So we build that to portfolios based on market capitalization uh, and to capture the size effect, go long to small stocks and we short the big stocks. So nothing special. Here is the backtested equity curve. So what is the first and interesting thing about the size effect that I would like to mention is that uh, it's highly seasonal. So what does it mean? There is very strong seasonality. January cumulative return of small capitalization stocks premium uh, during the January is significantly positive in other non-January months basically zero. So what does it mean is that it's not the factor that outperforms or performs all over the year or every year. There is very, very strong seasonality in the factor. Now there are multiple theories why it is so. One of the theories is that because large mutual funds, large hedge funds, they are trying to change the portfolio before the end of the year to show that they have very, very nice stocks in their portfolio. So they sell the stocks that are underperforming and sell the small stocks and they buy something large, nice looking like the Tesla or Microsoft or I don't know, Google or whatever, so some uh, large cap company. So that uh, when the end of the year comes, they can show in their report that they have nice names in their, in their portfolio. And once they do that, in the December, the size of the small stocks have uh, usually bad performance. In January, they perform once again uh, very well. So that's the reason for January effect in a size small cap. Uh, that's the one effect with the uh, small cap stocks. There is another thing that it would make sense to know about small size stocks. It means that uh, there is really a very long debate whether there, there really exists size effect because it's not just cyclical on a yearly basis, but it's also cyclical on a decades basis. What does it mean? It can take like 10 years of the outperformance of the large cap stocks against the small cap stocks. So that we have like decades like 90s where large stocks significantly outperformed the small cap stocks or 2010 until 2021 when again large cap stocks significantly outperformed the small cap stocks and uh, when we have such a long period of underperformance there is significant questions if this size effect really exists, if it's not just a very weak factor or some result of data mining. So there is a very interesting paper written by uh, David Blitz and uh, Matthias Anauer. They are uh, checking this uh, notion that uh, size factor maybe doesn't exist and low. What is uh, their result is that even in that case, the size factor can be even very important addition to other equity factors because it helps to unlock the full potential of quality, value, and momentum and other factors. So what does it mean is uh, that when we control for the size, when we buy the highest quality stocks or, or the best value stocks or best momentum stocks, these factors work the best in a small cap stocks. So maybe the size factor is not working well alone, but it can be very well combined with uh, other factors. So that's, uh, that's very important. Uh, there is another paper that I'd like to get into your attention, and it's about the takeover factor. It seems that the size factor can be explained by takeover factor. What does it mean? 
So what is the takeover factor? So it's a factor that's built from a M&A component. It's a merger and acquisition component of returns. So it means the significant performance of small cap stocks can be explained because they are often the target of mergers and acquisitions. And when this merger and acquisition is announced, these small cap stocks are usually highly performed. So when you are buying the small cap stocks, you are buying the target of acquisitions before the acquisition is announced. And in this case, you are outperforming, uh, but it's not because the small cap stocks are uh, individually better, but it's because they are often the target of acquisitions. So that's, uh, that's the reason. And uh, we can explain the size effect by uh, this factor. And there is another thing that I would like to stress, and that's uh, that the size factor is uh, very, very dependent on monetary policy regime. So in their papers, Simpson and Grossman, the researchers are once again researching the size factor. They are researching how are uh, small cap stocks outperforming large cap stocks, if they are uh, outperforming in, in which situation, etc. I would like to show you one uh, very important fact. So what they found out is that small size stocks significantly outperform only during the monetary uh, easing. So it means it's only during the time when the federal exchange is cutting interest rates. So interest rates are coming down and that's uh, the strong black line. That's the time when the small size stocks really, really outperform the large cap stocks. I mean, that's again very logical. The reason is that, that uh, during the monetary easing, there is very simple financing and especially small cap stocks that's very profitable uh, because usually the small cap stocks have a higher problem to obtain a sufficient fund. They are in a little disadvantage compared to large cap stocks that uh, don't have such problems. Small cap stocks usually really, really outperform only during the monetary easing, during the monetary uh, tightening. So when the interest rates are going up, really the size, uh, the small size uh, stocks underperform the large cap stocks. So once again, it really pay, uh, makes sense to pay attention. What is the monetary? A policy regime when you would like to invest into the small stocks. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that you like this uh, quick video about the size factor, about the small cap stocks. All of the links and all of the papers uh, are in the description. So if you would like to learn more about the small stocks, how to invest the small stocks and uh, how to invest profitably into small stocks and what are the different seasonalities and different effects that are related to small cap stocks, you can check our description. And I hope that you will join me in the next video. Uh, thank you very much. Interested? Then pick another video to learn more, or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.